So, until now whatever studies that we have uh, done uh, uh, discussion that we have done and the SN diagram that we have uh, discussed about all these are taken under the assumption that the mean stress is 0 that means fully reversed loading right. Now, we need to look in to the effect of mean stress. What if I have non-zero mean stress being applied to my component? Is it going to change the life of the component? Right. So here, the so in order to do that, you don't do a uh, normally the rotating beam bending test. The SN diagram is obtained by rotating beam bending test, which is fully reversed bending. But now you can do experiments with some finite mean stress, a positive mean stress. That uh, the mean stress is expected to be positive because in the negative stress, negative mean stress means compressive mean stress that is not going to affect the crack propagation because the state of stress is compression. Okay. So, here we are plotting the stress life diagram wherein sigma m 1 the mean stress 1, 2, 3, 3 different mean stresses you see that as you increase the mean stress right as you increase the value of the mean stress what happens for the same stress life. So, sigma m 3 is the low lowest mean stress that is the life that you got as you are increasing the mean stress from sigma m 3 to sigma m 2 your life reduced and further reduction the life reduced. That means, mean stress has increasing mean stress has a negative effect on the life of the component for a given stress amplitude right. So, you do that. So, now what uh, uh, so that means, your mean stress has an effect on the failure of the specimen right and hence you need to understand and you know you should be able to uh, describe the effect of the fatigue failure as a function of mean stress of the component ok. Here this graph is drawn for instance if you take a constant life. So, let us say this is the life I am talking about at this life this is my stress amplitude and mean stress combination S 1 sigma m 1 this is S 2 sigma m 2 S 3 sigma m 3. So, from now on I would represent stress amplitude not with S, but sigma a just to be consistent. So, this is sigma a 1 sigma m 1 sigma a 2 sigma m 2 sigma a 3 sigma m 3 all these points correspond to failure right. At this all these points corresponds to failure, but at the same life that means, at the failure life is same number of cycles. So, that let us say this is n cycles. If the material is failing at n cycles, if your mean stress is sigma m 1 then the stress amplitude it can withstand is sigma a 1. If your mean stress is sigma m 2 the stress amplitude is sigma a 2. If the mean stress is sigma m 3 the stress amplitude is sigma a 3. That means, for a constant life of n cycles on the x axis if I plot sigma m on the y axis if I plot sigma a then I would have something like that. As I am increasing sigma m my stress amplitude that the material can withstand is also reducing right. If I reduce my sigma m my stress amplitude is increasing that it can withstand for the same life. So, similarly if I would plot for a different life lower life then I would get a different curve and so on right. So, I can actually now draw this stress amplitude versus mean stress this is for an aluminum specimen a something called constant life diagram. So, this is this line corresponds to 10 power 4 cycles if my life that I am plotting is 10 power 5 cycles these are the data 10 power 6 cycles this is the data and so on ok. And now, if I normalize my amplitude. So, I am normalizing my stress amplitude 
with say uh, the ultimate strength of the material or something like that. Then you can see that the mean stress when the mean stress is positive we are not worried about the negative mean stress in this class we are only worried uh, focusing on the positive mean stress. When I am normalizing this stress amplitude with ultimate strength of the material that is 1 then you see that these guys sort of show a straight line right and hence I can now discuss different kinds of these failure surfaces for a constant life. So, let us say this is my mean stress and this is my stress amplitude on y axis I have S e that is my endurance strength and that is my sigma y the yield strength. Then if my failure so, this is my this is my mean stress is equal to 0. When the mean stress happens to be 0, let us say this is for 10 power 6 cycles or fatigue strength, then this is my endurance strength right for corresponding to 10 power 6 cycles. And this is my yield strength. If I draw a straight line between this guy and this guy, and that is my one failure surface that is what you call Soderberg line. Instead of considering sigma y, if I consider sigma u t ultimate strength, why is that? When my stress amplitude is 0, this is sigma a equal to 0, that means it is static loading, right. Then at static loading, my failure happens only at ultimate strength, not at yield strength. So, Soderberg initially gave this, this uh, point to be sigma y, but then later Goodman said no that is not the right point I think you should calculate you should take sigma u t on the x axis and hence you connect S e and S sigma u t then you have the modified Goodman line and instead of taking them to be a straight lines you can also take it to be a parabola which seems to match where better with the experimental data and then you have Gerber's parabola. And sometimes what you do is your ultimate strength needs to be corrected and sometimes you have uh, corrected ultimate strength and then you will have you if you have to con consider the corrected ultimate strength into consideration then your failure surface would be that ok. But however, most of the times modified Goodman this uh, red curve seems to uh, show a good match with the experimental data and hence we will use the modified Goodman diagram is as a uh, uh, failure surface when you are having mean stress to be taken into account ok. In the previous uh, figure this normalization is done with not with the ultimate strength, but with the uh, endurance strength of the material or fatigue strength of the material alright. So, now let us go about writing the equations for this it is a straight line this is your x intercept and this is your y intercept. So, you can always write your x is sigma m y is sigma a. So, I can write for Soderberg sigma m by x intercept is sigma y that is yield strength by plus stress amplitude by S e equal to 1. Similarly, that is your Soderberg. Similarly, you replace the x intercept and y intercept and you will get the Goodman, the parabola should be a para uh, the equation of a parabola. So, all these three equations are given a sigma a, yeah, sigma a by y intercept plus sigma m by x intercept for Soderberg line, this is Goodman line, and this is Gerber's parabola, ok. All right. So, this is how uh, the effect of mean stress the mean stress is normalized with ultimate stress strength and alternating stress is uh, normalized with alternating fatigue strength as we have discussed already right. So, that is why it is between 1 and 1. Here also it is aluminum alloys. So, this is for st uh, steel set this corresponds to 10 power 7 to 10 power 8 cycles then corresponds to 5 into 10 power 8 cycles. This uh, this curve might change uh, uh, the, for aluminum alloys it is at 5 into 10 power 8 cycles all right. And now another important uh, uh, 
question that we need to address is the effect of compressive mean stress. What do you mean by uh, what happens when you have compressive mean stress? It turns out that the compressive mean stresses are actually beneficial because when you have a compressive local compressive state of stress, the cracks are actually going to close. They are not going to open up. Only tensile stresses will be responsible for opening the cracks. And hence, generally, the residual compressive mean stress are usually induced in the high alternating tensile stress regions to improve the fitting life. People do it intentionally to increase the fitting life. You uh, do the residual compressive mean stresses, you induce compressive mean stress on the system in order to delay the fatigue failure. You can clearly see when you have mean stress to be 0, you are for a given stress amplitude, right. If you have tensile mean stress, you fail much early, 0 mean stress a little later, compressive mean stress much later. So, that clearly shows you a enhancement in the fatigue life for a given stress amplitude when the mean stress is compressive in nature. Okay? All right. So, now let us look at the effect of mean stress on life here. A steel specimen actually exactly the same steel specimen that we have uh, discussed in the previous uh, example is uh, subject to a tensile mean stress of 200 MPa and the ultimate strength of the material is 1172 MPa. What is the life expected if the stress amplitude is 450 MPa? Okay. So, this data is sub corresponding to uh, when cyclic loading is 200 MPa, mean tensile mean stress is 200 MPa and if your alternating stress is 450 MPa or stress amplitude is 450 MPa, what is the life expected? Okay. So, how do we go about doing that? So, now you, you look at your schematic of um, Goodman diagram, this is SU2 and this is SE1, SE2, SE3. SE1 corresponds to a life of N1. S e 2 corresponds to a life of n 2, S e 3 corresponds to a life of n 3. Now, from this data, you calculated what is your a and b, right. And then, the Goodman diagram tells us that sigma a by S e prime plus sigma m by S u t equal to 1. Here, I am using S e dash because I do not have the information about corrective, corrected endurance strength, right. So, uh, I have to use uncorrected endurance strength. So, I am calculating uncorrected endurance strength and that comes out to be 542 MPa. So, once you know the uncorrected endurance strength, what you have is S equal to A n power B, right. And this is my uncorrected endurance strength, that is what you need to plug in and then A and B are known, then you will be able to calculate N, right. That gives you a life of 91,716 cycles, right. When there is no mean stress, then you directly calculate what is the life of this component in the absence of mean stress.